in the previous segment we talked about um, dilatation that means in in um, suppose a body is subjected to um, stresses in many direction what is the change in volume that happens per unit volume so we calculated that and we defined poisons ratio uh, sorry the bulk modulus from that in terms of young's modulus and poisons ratio and in this segment what we are going to do is we are trying to answer a question that suppose a body uh, for example say you have a body like this a prismatic bar of say rectangular cross section okay it's like this and you are applying a force f here obviously the other side also you are applying the same force to keep it in balance okay now so this uh, this is the case actually in fact we are we have been discussing for this whole um, uh, unit the first unit the axial loading okay and we always talk about the uh, the normal stress right the sigma the sigma is nothing but this f over a if a is the area of cross section of this um bar prismatic bar okay but then the question which now we are going to take up is is it possible that even in this case where the load is pure axial uh, are there some section which are subjected to shear okay and we have discussed what a shear loading is right or shear stress is so to answer that what we will do is um say we will take a section like this mm. so like this okay so the side view i will draw here so that it will be easier to see and then so this is the bar which is under consideration and you have applied forces like this and now we have this cross section which is at an angle of theta with the vertical okay now if uh, so see if this area is a now this area will be a over cosine of theta right so this cosine theta is a yeah fine so this area is a over cosine theta so that's the first thing so the the, the cross sectional area is a over cos theta now let's see um let's try to draw the this uh, portion okay the left side portion uh, so something like this fair okay so this side it's f now here this f we will resolve into two components one in this direction and the other in this we will call this as a p and this is a v okay and this was the mm, gen the actual force f now f has been resolved into this uh, slightly i should have uh, okay uh, it should be up to this point right yep so this is f so it's now if this angle is theta so this angle is theta that means p is nothing but f um, cos theta and v is nothing but f um, sin of theta okay that means now if we try to calculate the normal stress and the shear stress now we can calculate because uh the normal stress on this uh, area i'll say write ab on ab uh 
uh, is equal to p over a prime i'll write this a prime okay which is nothing but um, f cos theta over okay so f over a cosine square theta and similarly the shear stress on ab will be this f over a sine theta sorry um, cosine theta right so this is what i was talking about see we are applying a normal uh, situation of axial loading but just by changing or or looking at a cross section which is not perpendicular to the force uh, and it is at a slanted angle then we are uh, now seeing stresses which till now we were not considering okay we were considering only this normal stress which used to be f over a when theta used to be zero yeah so when theta is zero so it becomes the same area and f over a but now as soon as we start uh, started looking at different angles or, or, or cross sections at different angles we are uh, we are seeing that the shear stress is coming up now so that's the, the first um, instance where it tells you that um, you shouldn't be complacent saying that okay i am applying an axial load so um, things are safe even from the perspective of shearing suppose a material is having a very low shearing strength okay it's very slippery okay it's not uh, uh, it, its pulling strength is good but it's very slippery between cross sections so that it can shear but then if you are just thinking from the perspective of pulling and you will feel somehow wrongfully that it is safe but it may so happen that on a particular uh, sheared section it, it actually can get sheared now um, so, so this is the concept which uh, now asks us to think more about the state of stress in a general way and not um, confine ourselves to only the, sh uh, the the normal stresses okay because even in the case of uh, pure or axial loading we have situation where shear is happening and just one more point before we stop this segment is um, just to investigate a case where these uh, stresses will be maximum obviously this sigma will be maximum when this theta is zero that means on the normal thing but this one the shear stress will be maximum when this theta is 45 degree okay so if we take cross sections which are um, exactly 45 degree to this so on those cross section the shear stress is maximum and then in that point it will be um, f over 2a and um, and then the same time the on that plane even the value of the normal stress will be f over 2a so 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 that is the situation which uh, should be kept in mind uh, just as a anything else which i wanted to tell about this no nothing more um, yeah so so this is a prelude in a way to our um, requirement that we should be talking about stress in a more general term and not restrict ourselves to only normal stress so yeah so in the next segment what we will do we will just uh, define the shear strain because till now uh, we have defined shear stress in a previous segment we even in fact uh, we saw what in, in what such situation it uh, comes up and here again we saw uh, that on, uh, such sections may be subjected to shear stresses but never we have talked about shear strain okay the normal strain strain was properly defined but never we have defined shear strain so in the next segment we will just define the shear strain and then in the next unit uh, which will be in fact about the general state of stress uh, where we will use these concepts of um, different stresses and strains which we have defined in this unit so see you in the next unit